Hello designers! In today's tutorial, I will show you how to create a color wheel using Adobe Photoshop. As you can see by these examples from previous students, you guys are going to select an object from pexels.com that is going to be the focus of your color wheel. Then we're going to colorize that object and put it in rainbow order on Photoshop. To start with, we're going to go to Photoshop, select Control N to create a new document, and we're going to select the print preset. Then we're going to enter a width and a height of 10 inches by 10 inches. This should give you a perfect square. What I want to do is actually split this square into four equal pieces. So I'm going to go to View and Guide and New Guide. And I'm going to place a vertical guide at 5 in or 5 inches. Please make sure you guys are writing in after 5. Otherwise, it might place it at 5 pixels, which would be too small. Then I'm going and repeating my steps and adding a horizontal guide and also placing it at 5 inches or 5 in. I'm going to hit Control O so I can open the image that I downloaded from pexels.com. Because the image has a lot of content, I'm using my crop tool, tool number five, so I can crop out the excess image, and all I want is basically Mario. So then I'm going to be using tool number four, my quick selection tool, and if I click select subject at the top of my workspace, Photoshop is essentially going to go and make a selection of my uh, object. I'm going to hit control C then control V to paste it inside of my document. I'm going to resize my image by hitting control T and I'm going to drag on the corners until it's small enough that I can put it um, and duplicate it eight times over in my document. From here, I essentially want to go and create eight duplicates of this object. So I'm going to hit Control J and that's going to create a copy that I have to click on and drag down. What I want to do is for each of my copies, I'm going to hit Free Transform or again Control T so that I can go and um, rotate it. And you can see how I'm following the same steps. This is going to get very repetitive where I hit Control J so I can make a duplicate of the little figure and then control T so that I can go and rotate the figure around the document. What I want to do is I want to place the little Mario figure like the hands on a clock. So starting from the top, I'm working my way around and basically going and placing little Mario figures and rotating them so that I, I have eight equal layers. Now that I have my eight duplicates of Mario, I'm basically going to go and double click on each layer name and rename each layer with a specific color. And I want to follow Roy G. Viv or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. I also want to add two tertiary colors. Tertiary colors, as you guys will recall, are the colors that you mix when you take a primary and a secondary. So magenta, for example, would be between purple and red. Teal, for example, would be between green and blue. So I want to make sure I add at least two of those. To colorize each of the figures, I'm going to my hue and saturation adjustment, which I can find by clicking Control U in my keyboard. And I want to make sure I click the little checkbox that says colorize so that it colorizes the entire figure, as you can see that I'm doing for the red and the orange. 
Then I'm dragging where it says hue to go and adjust the color for each of the figures respective with the name I gave it in the layer. So you can see here I'm doing green. I'm sorry, I'm doing yellow it looks like. And to do so, I have to click colorize, drag on the specific color in the color wheel that I'm working on. And I can also adjust the saturation, which is how vibrant that color is going to appear. So you can see for the blue here, I'm making the blue extremely vibrant with a saturation of about 80. You guys are going to repeat each of these steps for every single color. Please make sure that all of your colors are in rainbow order or I will take points off your final color wheel. Now that I'm pretty much done colorizing my layers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down control on my keyboard and I'm gonna click on each of the layers one by one. I'm doing this so that I can go and group the layer when I hit control G. I wanna group the layer to make it easier for me to apply effects uniformly to each of the Mario figures. The first effect I'm gonna be using is drop shadow. You can find your effects by clicking on FX at the bottom of the layers panel. You can see how I'm adjusting the distance and the spread of this drop shadow. I also have it set to a violet color instead of black and this will just make the Mario figures look a little bit more three-dimensional. I also want to emphasize the cartoony feeling of these Marios by going and giving them a pretty thick white outline. Any point in time I can double click on those effects and, ar and arrange the settings differently. Now I'm going to click on my background layer. I'm going to click on the new adjustment layer icon and I'm going to select on a gradient adjustment. I'm selecting one of the different presets. I know I already wanted some pretty neutral colors for the background because my color wheel is already so colorful. And I want to select a radial gradient which will make sure that basically the color is radiating from the center and out. You guys can always go and double click on the color stops like I'm doing right now and go and change the colors in the gradient to customize them to your desires. You can see how I'm dragging my mouse over the image and the eyedropper is basically going and sampling some of the colors that I'm using in the image already to match them to the gradient I want to use in my background. As I said before, the effects are fully customizable, so as you can see here that I'm just making my stroke a little bit thicker, and because I had grouped these objects before, it made it a lot easier for me to then um, apply all the effects uniformly. I'm going to hit Control S to save my in-progress draft, and now that I'm ready to export, I'm going to go to File at the top of my workspace, select Export, and Export As. I want to save this as a pretty high resolution raster file. Raster file means that it's made out of pixels. I'm going to save the work in PNG format and then I'm going to click the blue export button. Please make sure you guys remember to name the color wheel so that it's easy for you guys to find and you guys are then going to go and upload your final draft in PNG format to Schoology. This is what my final color wheel looks like. Hit me up if you have any questions. Peace out.